for the first part, I will focus on the first half is like on machine learning for system. And why are we doing this? The main motivation behind that is, and that shouldn't be a surprise to many of you, that Moore's law is ending. And so the like, uh, speed on how processors are improving is slowing down. At the same time, the data is increasing every single day. So we get more and more data while the hardware is not improving as fast anymore. So the question is how to deal with that. And one solution is actually specialization. And we see that happening already on the hardware front, right? There are like things like GPUs, FPGAs, TPUs, and so on. What we are wondering is, can we do something very similar with systems? Like, can we improve system to be specialized for a workload to get much, much better performance out of them? This is actually not a new idea. Every system out there has a bunch of knobs, and by tuning the knobs, you're actually specializing it to the workload you have. Like, for example, databases have a buffer manager, and you're adjusting the buffer size depending on the workload, which is a form of optimizing it for the workload. However, we want to go beyond that, and we are looking into on how we can build learned components which like, embed machine learning much more deeply to get much better like, specialization. We call it then instance optimization. These are like techniques which are now just like coming on the market. They're slowly being integrated. To give you like a few examples, these are like some of the algorithms we have been working on over the last couple of years, from indexing, bloom filters, range filters. But you see here like some of these like very fundamental data structures where we took a fresh approach to it. Here I will just like give you a very brief overview of like two of them, indexes and multidimensional indexes, just as an idea. And I best compare them uh, like to on how you would look up a book in a library. Right, so like every database uses an index to make access to records more efficient. This is very similar on how you would find a book in a library. For example, let's assume you want to look for Harry Potter. How do you go about that? You would probably look for one of these index cards, which gives you the location of that book. Right? If you have a large library, you have like a whole huge cabinet of that, and then you try to traverse this to find actually the book. This is very similar on how a database actually would do it. So they have a data structure called a B tree, which you start on with the title you're looking for, let's say Harry Potter, and then you slowly navigate your way down from the cabinets to like eventually an index card, which gives you the location. And that points you then, in the case of a database, to a location on, on disk. However, there's an alternative approach to doing that. Instead of going through the index cards, you actually ask your librarian, right? Because the librarian has a mental model how things are distributed in the library, and he can point you roughly in the right direction, and then you do a little bit of localized search to actually find the book you are looking for. This is exactly the principle we are now trying to exploit. So instead of using this index card, we replace it with a librarian, so we want to see if we can do something similar to find a book, but instead of using this like B-tree structure, we just use a model which knows a rough location. And it turns out this is actually possible by approximating the CDF of the keys you're looking for, and then this, like, you create a model of the CDF, the model gives you an approximate location, and then you do like a localized search around that to eventually find the book you're looking for. This is not an approximate structure, it gives you the exact same guarantees. And it turns out that if you do that, and you, you tweak the models a little bit, it can be much, much faster than a traditional B-tree, and more importantly, much smaller, so orders of magnitude smaller. Right. Interestingly, when we published this paper, it is now a little bit older in 2018, there has been a whole bunch of follow-up work on that area. And now the same idea is used in genomics and many other uh, like areas. One thing I skipped over here, though, is like if you go back to the librarian on how he uh, has like the library, one thing he can also do is he can actually reorganize the library based on the access patterns he sees from its users. For example, if like kids are often coming in, you want, might want to have them at the bottom. Right? So like essentially he reorganizes based on how people use it. And so now we are exploring like similar ideas also in the context of database systems again, where we observe the workload and based on that we are trying to figure out how to lay out the data. So this is like a very simple example of a query filtering by salary and age. And now there are different options to organize the data. For example, one is you could sort by age, you could uh, sort by salary, both have ups and downsides. But we are trying to figure out like automatically based on the workload, figure out the right layout, very similar to reorganizing a library, on how to give you the best possible performance in the end. Uh, the initial results we have on that are very, very promising, like, order of, uh, uh, like orders of magnitude faster and orders of magnitude smaller in index size. Okay, however, what we are really after is now like after looking at a lot of these like long components, 
how can we put it all together? And now we are looking into building like an entire system based on this like learn components idea. Um, the current one we are working on is called Brad, which is like a new approach to build like an automatic data infrastructure management system. So it takes the services you have and tries to automatically optimize them based on the workload you have. And it integrates a whole bunch of this like learning techniques fully automatically for you. So this is ongoing research with many of my colleagues and many of my students and my team. So now let's looking at the other half of it, like systems for machine learning. So essentially what we are looking there into is how can we rethink the way on how people do analytics? Um, as motivation, we actually looked into many of these movies like Minority Report where you have like Tom Cruise waving around with his hands and suddenly some insights pop up. If you look at any like James Bond movie, it's always like a highly visualized system which shows like the results on some display. So if you take all these like movies and the visions on how it's like modern analytics depicted in, in like TV shows and other things, and you contrast it to how analytics looks like nowadays, you get a very different picture, right? So we are trying to rethink that, and we did a research project called Northstar, and this is like an early prototype of it, which is now being commercialized as a MIT spin-off, Einblick, uh, which shows like on how we see this like modern way of analytics could look like, where like people work in teams on large collaborative screens and do analytics on the fly and make discoveries, build models, and do other things. More recently though, our focus like particular also looked into like large language models and what that would mean for analytics. So we actually are deep believers that natural language is becoming the new SQL. And if you know that most people will interact with the system using natural language, it has like fundamental implication on also how you design the system, right? Like these large language models in particular are good in like picking up new APIs and other capabilities on the fly. So this is actually now something which is already integrated in the Einblick platform where people can ask full text natural language questions and it automatically creates full workflows based on that, right? Like it was just like one prompt. They also added capability of each operation you have on the screen to modify it using prompts as well. So like everything you have, like a table and other operation, now you can modify using natural language as well. Right, so I think the change is like fundamentally how we think about analytics should be done. There are a whole bunch of interesting recent challenges around that, like the context, how to deal with the latency, hallucination, the robustness of the models. Immediately half of the room will probably be asking here is just like how do we ensure that the answers are correct? That's a good question. So we, we took like a lot of energy to put in that the, to tweak the models in a way that they actually ask questions back if they're unsure about something. It works not perfectly, but it works better than if you would take a model out of the box. So with that, I'm concluding. Uh, it's a, it was a pleasure to talk here, and thanks again for having me.